Hello to everyone. Maybe you have some question about the weird name of this uh, webinar, but you, it will be clarified in the next uh, half an hour. Um, in my presentation, I will give an introduction, list of bullet, bullets. Later, I'm gonna use a, a small example to show the idea. It was an example I take from a software conference 43 years ago. The next step, I wanna question with you if these ideas is useful, are useful today. And then at the end, I will, I will make a summary. Well, many centuries ago existed a wonderful continent called Atlantis. In that place, everything was wonderful. Everyone was very happy. You can see, it was beautiful. Well, you all know Atlantis is a myth. It never existed. We would like it to exist, but it's not. Also, many years ago, existed something called structure programming. There were many advocates of these ideas. One of those was Dijkstra and other David Parnas. Who is Dijkstra? I don't want you to pay attention to the letters. It is too much information. I would like you to pay attention to the dates. The first paper of Parnas about structural programming, it was published 52, 53 years ago. The idea was very simple. No tools of the development and modularity. Many people at that time wrote about structural programming. There were a lot of enthusiasm. The paper was written in 75, this is 79. Also, 15 years later, Harlan Mills from IBM wrote a paper making a kind of summary of what's going on. He said that before structured programming, the challenge was to make the software run and later to debug this to do the right stuff. After the structured programming, it was clear that the software was to run and the challenge was to make it run with little or no debugging at all. Also, before it was accepted that it was not possible to create a large software with no with errors, with no defects. After social programming, it was believed that um, so, well, after social programming, many software can run for many years with no defect at all. In his paper, he talked about an example developed at that time. It was a project that IBM developed for New York Times that was finished in the middle of 71. It was a small project, four to 11 programmer for two years. In that project, the quality was on one defect per thousand lines of code. Also, at that time, it was common that, uh, that an online application crashes every day. And the New York Times software crashes just once in, the, in one year. Another very big project with less publicity, also developed by IBM, it was developed for, with 400 programmers during three years, finished in 74. And they think that in that, that project, they increases productivity by a factor of three. The technology that we have at that time, it was assembled Fortran and Cobalt. Not too nice, not very nice, but it was a good tools. Another guy that uh, to focus was modularity, write one of his first paper in 71, just two years after Dijkstra paper. Also, he wrote a lot, but he published in 78 one very important paper in the software engineering conference. It happened that I was there, and I learned some very important ideas from partners. Well, at that time, everything was wonderful. Everyone was very happy. Quality was one one defect per thousand lines of code, and the productivity had increased by a factor of three. But this is not a myth. Those two guys 
are real guys. Well, this uh, passed away at the beginning of the century. He spent from 85 to the end of the century teaching in Austin, Texas. Parnas is a guy that born in Pittsburgh. He got his degree there. He became a teacher in Canada and he's still around teaching and giving some conferences. But today, not too many people talk about Mr. Amparnas. To, well, I think that on the two strength side, they are two strategies to develop software. On one side, the option is to hire billion developers, allow them time to get a good understanding of the requirement and success, once in a while they have success, they succeed. Success is tied to, the, to this brilliant developer. In the other side, the option is to build teams of competent engineers of different level of experience and try them in engineering practices. In this situation, success is due to the team and the, and the engineering practices. We think in this situation, the success is sustainable. And this is our bet. We want to create high performance teams of well-trained engineers. This is our challenge. In this seminar, I keep a focus. Me, my company, my people are in the data processing software space. We don't develop compilers. We don't develop operating system. We don't develop games. We just develop data processing application and what well, some kind of tool to support our our teams. For that kind of software, uh, you know, first we need to deal with the user to get a good understanding of what he needs, what he wants. After that, we need to think about the big structure of the software, how we are going to solve the problem. And later we have to construct everything. And it's where the very small pieces of business logic reside. Here we have a lot of different tasks. For each one of these tasks, we, we have a process. This is our PSP, personal software process. We call this our flavor is flawless execution process. And this process has several steps. My focus today is just this tiny uh, step on developing an small task. You have to develop many in a project, but this is just one small part. I'm going to use a toy program as an example to show you the idea. This is an example I hear from partners on Atlanta 42 years ago. And let's pause for a minute that uh, John was a good developer, a good architect and good project leader. He used to work for me, but he advertised because he thought software, software was uh, frustrating sometimes. You need to work harder and he wanted a better life. And he retired and he moved to Lake Tahoe to live there. But uh, John was an active guy. He wanted to do something. And then he created a small business to rent boats to the people going in vacation to LA. This happened that a year ago, I traveled to Lake Tahoe on vacation and found John. I didn't know he was there. Hello, John, how are you doing? How? And he said, well, you know, someone was very difficult. I decided to have a better life. I'm happy here. Said, well, see, I have a business and everything is okay. Okay, congratulations. And then John told me, well, in the last few months, I've been thinking about that. I would like to have a software to run my business, but I don't want to develop it by myself. I don't want to get back in that, into that stuff. Could you develop that project for me? It would be a business for you. Wonderful. I was on vacation, I was not looking for business, and I found a business, that's wonderful. What do you want us to do for you? Well, it's very simple. I want to be able to enter information in my computer, and at the end of the day, to be able to know how many rights we have that day 
and what was the average time for those rides. Okay, it also seems too hard. Uh, we'll send you a proposal next Monday. Then, when I was back in Towa, I get with my engineering team and think about what we were going to do. Well, uh, as you know, it's very difficult to know how much time you are going to spend on the project. We didn't have any good idea. But anyway, he decided to send a proposal for $25,000. When John received my proposal, he said, hmm, Gerard is charging too much for me. He's crazy. Well, but he is a good guy. I was very happy when I worked with them. I learned a lot. My doing, my business is doing well. I will pay the $25,000 and he accepted the proposal. We were happy and we started work it, working immediately. Then thinking about the project, how to do it, we realized we may have a boat about the fashion at five o'clock in the morning. Maybe the next one departs at six, the third at seven. The boat that departs at six arrives at eight, and the other one arrives at nine and the other at 10. Well, we have a good idea and they start working into the design. And we get into what we call a thinking process to create the design of the software. We need, why well, know we need to compute total rights and total time. Then immediately I went to my computer, open my Visual Studio, create a class and wrote these two initialization by the work. Next, I realized I have a bunch of both departure and both arrivals that all flew in some sequence. And I said, well, I need to do something to do something with, with every one of the, the events. And then I sketched a while loop to be able to process that. Later, I knew I have to deal with each one of the events once at a time. Then I got the event and I realized that for each one of the events, I have two options. It is a departure or it is an arrival. I decided to count the departure and the clever idea was if I subtract the departure time and later add the arrival time, I had the value I need to compute. Okay, I subtract the time here and I add the time here. At the end, I compute the average and show the information on the screen. When we finish, we test a uh, lot the software, it runs okay, we pack and send back to John. John was anxious to receive his software. He loves software. The problem was he, doesn't want, he don't, didn't want to develop it anymore. When he received, he followed the instruction, installed the application and run, and he was very happy. The application was exactly what we asked, that what he asked us to do for him. We forgot about John, we started working on many other projects, and later, this uh, last uh, winter, I traveled to Lake Tahoe again, I, and I had forgotten about John. I didn't remember he was there, and suddenly I found John. Hello, John, how are you? Ah, yes, I remember. You came live here to live in Tajo. Yes, remember, you developed a wonderful application for me. Ah, yes, yes, I remember. How is it everything? Oh, no, it was wonderful. The application has allowed me to make good decisions for my business. Today, I have more boats. I hire my pe my, more people. I even add food to my business because I know that with the food, the people will stay longer in the lake. That means more rice and more time on the lake. Okay, wonderful. Well, but last week I was thinking that I would like to have some more information on my application. Could you that, could you do that addition for me? It will be a business. Okay, no problem. What do you need? And he told me, well, Today, I have the total rights, I have the average. I would like to have also what, how long was the minimum right and how long was the maximum right 
of that date. I think that with those two pieces of information, I could manage better my business. At that moment, I didn't remember how we did this over for him. I said, well, I'll send you a proposal by the end of next week, not next Monday. <laughs> I knew we have to get into the software to understand what we did to be able to make an, a, a proposal. When I came back to Towa, we'd get together with the engineering team. We remember what we have done before. And I realized that the modification was not to be seen. What happened? There is no natural place to insert these new business rules. There is no place. Then we had two options to refactor code to have a better structure. That means to pay the technical debt and it was going to be expensive or to do some more clever tricks to memorize here the departure time. That means to increase technical debt. This seems hard. This seems too much work. We didn't make the decision what we were going to do but we decided to bid again $25,000 to John. When John received the proposal, he was surprised. Well, Gerardo is crazy. This is too much money. And he called me immediately. Why, Gerardo, what happened? Maybe you, you made a mistake. This is too much money. Well, John, just kidding. you don't know. It, it is hard to do this change. No, it is really easy. I just want those two pieces of information on the back of the screen. No, John, you don't understand, we fight. We couldn't understand each other and he didn't give us the, pro the project. He went to hire someone else immediately. The other one was worse than we were. <laughs> the project failed. He didn't have his uh, new application. He lost his money. As you know, in this kind of situation, nobody wins. Nobody wins, they, they didn't know why. I want to show you a different alternative to this situation. It is the same problem. I'm using partners idea with an addition. That means that the basis, the idea I learned from partners 43 years ago. Well, in these 43 years, we have doing a lot of refinement, a lot of improvement of the basic idea. And the process is a different process. It is not a designing process. It is a discovery process. What does it mean? Well, I need to discover problem structures. And for every problem, the only two alternatives at each level of the problem is it is a set some parts, or is a set of something, or it is some alternatives. To discover the structure, I need to play with the problem, trying to find out what is the problem. That means I play with the problem about the parts at five, another one the part at six, another one the parts at seven, this one arrived at eight, this arrived at nine, this arrived at, at 10. I need to count both rights. I need to compute cumulative rights time. I need to compute average average right time. As you see, everything is about rights. Then I start thinking about the structure of the problem. And the structure of the problem is clearly a set of rights. It's in this kind. It's a set of something. It's a high of set of something. I need to map the structure of the problem to the structure of the program. If I have a set of something, I need a cycle to process each one of those something once at a time, okay? And in this case, it means I have a loop to process right. This is the structure of the solve. Only I, after I have finished this discovering the structure of the problem and modeling the structure of the program to the structure of the problem, I start refining the detailed design and writing code. In the past, 
I wanted to design using a flowchart, but I realized that with the millennials, it's very hard for them to do a flowchart. They, they don't want. They are anxious to get into the keyboard to do something. And in these times, in the last year, when I don't have a blackboard to be working with the people, I start trying to do on the computer and it was nice. The problem is not coding. The problem is not doing design. And I decided I'm going to do design. I'm going to describe in design using code, not using a flowchart. In this situation, well, first I have to decide when do I want to end the loop. If whenever this is more right, I stay in the loop. For each one of the rights, I need to do something to process one, at one of the rights at a time. I need to count the right, to compute the time, and to add the cumulative time. Since I did something here, I need to initialize something here, and I need to do some computing at the end. And that's it. When John made the next proposal, the next requirement to add these two pieces of information, here was a natural place to add those new business rules with no problem at all. I need to add something here, I need to initialize something, and maybe to do something at the end. What does this mean? Program design should model problem structure. It is a discovery thinking process. It is not a design. To make clear the difference, I'm going to give you an example. When Columbus, 500 years ago, decided to navigate to the West, he discovered America. He didn't design America. America was there. He just discovered, and he was discovered by accident. He, didn't, he wasn't looking for America, but he discovered America. America was discovered. America was not designed. The same here. What we have? Well, on one side, we have this track. This took, the idea is, is simple and it's good. No, no go tools, top down development, modularity. This is okay but it's not enough. On the other side, we have the idea of fairness, and that means we need to pay attention to discover the structure of the problem. Okay. And what we do, we, do we get? Top down discover, structure discovery is doable. Why I say doable? The problem is there. We just need to dig into the problem to discover what's in there. When we do that, the modules of the program are part of the problem. Coding meaningful. When you are reading a piece of code, you can watch the problem at work. The problem is doing something. It's not instruction. It's the problem doing something. Maintenance will be easy. In our experience, you require 40% less code most of the time. You get much less complexity the software run very efficient, and the most important, you don't provoke, you don't cause a structural technical debt. This is important, no technical debt. Well, but that was with a toy example that I knew 43 years ago. The question is, these ideas are useful today? For to show this, I got a video from, from a Google coding interview. It is a almost an hour video. I just select a um, summary of less than a minute and a half, half and I'm gonna show you this video in a few minutes. Okay. Tell me how many rectangles are formed on the plane by these coordinates. So for instance, if I give you this, you see how I, I want you to write a function that takes in these points and that tells me how many rectangles, rectangles that are parallel to the X and Y. I would say that we're looking for such quadruples, X, Y, then the other point has the same coordinate X, 
but different y and some different x y x to y two yes and now are different because otherwise we would count uh, the degenerated rectangles of like zero area yeah and y is not y two I'm going to do fully but some pseudocode could be that I iterate over one point in points just increase some counter by one I would count like vertical lines that can be I want to count the number of other pairs that produce the same pair the idea is to here increase the count for a pair py p above y where this is say a map Let's increase the count of this pair so basically I don't know if you were able to follow this guy. I had a hard time understanding what he did. And after thinking for a while, I believe this logic works. I think this guy is brilliant, very, very clever. The same, this, the interviewer has the same opinion. And I would like to emphasize, this is the way the most power, some of the most powerful organization in the world develop software. This is Google, Amazon, Facebook, and all those kind of applications. Their strategy seems to be to hire very brilliant people, and it seems to work. I want to show you the, the other approach for the same problem. Okay. As I said, I need to discover the structure of the problem. For that, I need an example. I need a simple example, not very simple, sufficient to, to really think about this. And I realized, well, in this problem, I have a set of nine points in this example. And I realized that a rectangle of this kind that is sides are parallel to the axis I can describe that rectangle with just three points. The point A with just two points, the point A and the point B. If the point B is right and opposite and above point A, and also I have this point on the above A, and I have this point to the right of I, then I found a rectangle. I said that I have a set of nine points. But also in this nine point, I have a set of 36 combination of two points. If the points were not nine, were thousand, a thousand, I have a set of almost half a million combination of two points. When I have uh, discovered that, I said, well, I need to process a set of combination of two points. And I map the structure of the, my program to that uh, structure of the problem. For every combination of two points also, there, is your, there are just two alternatives. It is a rectangle or it's not a rectangle. Then I'm done. I have discovered the structure of the problem. I can model the structure of the program to map the structure, the structure of the problem. Then I start I continue refining, refining the design. And the first module becomes a function that is going to do something and return a count. And I start refining this. First of all, I have to sequence to process all the combination of two points. I could be able to do this in a double loop, but I decided to do this more elegant and to have a class to sequence all the combination of two points. And here I process all the combination of two points. For every combination of two points, I need to do something. And then I decide to have a method to find out if that combination, can, with that combination, I could find a rectangle. If it's a rectangle, I count. If not, I don't count then the right part become just a function to compute if it is a rectangle or not. 
And as I said before, I need the point B to be up and to right of point A. And I did this point to exist, and I did this point to exist. And this is just a Boolean expression to do that. I need a small method to be able to compute this. And I need other two small methods to be able to compute this. And I'm done. I'm finished. Then, summary, what do I have now? On one side, we have this trust idea. But if you focus this trust idea to go into the design immediately, you will end up with a lot of technical debt. On this right side, we have the partners' ideas. When you focus on discovering the structure of the problem, and then to model the structure of the problem, the, the structure of the program to the structure of the problem, and then to build the logic on that. But this was a, a very simple example 43 years ago. What do we have today? In today's example, it is the same. It, it is the same. Here is a lot of clever ideas. It, it seems to work. On the other side, is a to discover the structure of the problem and then to model the logic on that structure of the problem. On the left side, what do we have? When you focus on logic design, most of the time you use a lot of clever ideas. Solo very intelligent people are capable of doing that. What was the intelligent idea? From each one of the event, I subtract the departure time and later I would add the arrival time. It, it is very clever. On the second example, this guy is processing a set of vertical lines and he counts the vertical lines at the same level. And the count is some kind of curious counting. You count previous count at the same level. That's on what I'm going to say here in this moment. On the right side, when you move to Parnas idea, you focus on the structural discovery. It is a systematic thinking process. It is a systematic thinking process that you can train the people to think systematically, to be able to discover the structure. In the first example, we have a set of boats, right? On the second example, we set a set of combination of two points. And that every combination of two points is or not is a rectangle. And the result is not technical there. <laughs> Summary. As I told you, we are very, very inside of the process. This is the macro process. This is a process to construct one of the tasks. And this is just one step. In this step, you spend about five to seven percent of the time. But to do it right is crucial to succeed, to succeed. If you are doing right, maybe on a task that you will spend 20 hours, you spend doing this one hour or one and a half, and the result is not technical there. If you are doing wrong, maybe you don't do a structural discovery, or you do it lightly and wrong, you will end up spending the 20 hours or maybe more, and you get a lot of technical debt. To learn this, it's not easy. It's like riding a bike. Riding a bike is not, is not difficult, but you have to learn, and you have to practice, and you have to practice a lot. We have a three weeks intensive training, 15 days, eight and a half hours a day. In that training, we teach the, the student about 30 different ideas, 30 different stuff. But I said to the guys, this one value 80%. That means if you don't understand anything of the training, but you understand this very well, you are in the happy side. 
Well, what's happening with a real size project? These two were toy program problems. A real size project, not too big, is a hundred thousand lines of code. This means about five thousand chances to do right or wrong. Five thousand chances to avoid technical debt and be happy, or to add lots of technical pay, debt and pay. If you get technical debt, you will pay. Sooner or later, you will pay. Thank you.